Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper 1-1 of October, November 2011. Let's go on to question number one. So here we have evaluate 3 plus 5, bracket 3 minus 1.4. So we have to follow the rules of BOD mass. B-O-D-M-A-S. So we first have to do everything inside the bracket. So 3 minus 1.4 will be 1.6. Then we have to do multiplication and then addition. So what is 5 times 1.6? So let's do this here. 5 times 1.6, that will be 30. 5 times 1 is 5, 8, so 8. So this will be 8.0. So 3 plus 8.0, that will be 11. 11 will be your answer part A. Now for part B, you have 0 0.2 times 0 0.07. So first thing, do 2 times 7, you have 14, and then here we have two decimal place, and here we have 1, so in total we have 1, 2, 3. So your answer is 0 0.014. Now for question part 2, we first have to expand this, so 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 11 over 3, minus 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14, over 5. So now the base is different. We have to do LCM. So we just multiply them and then cross multiply. So 5 times 11 is 55 minus what is 14 times 3. That will be 12, 42. So simplify uh, 55 minus 42. What do you have? That would be 3, 13 over 35. Your answer will be uh, 13 over 35. Now for part B, express this uh, in its lowest term. So we have to simplify this. So uh, 48 over 84. So let's try dividing by 4 first. That will be 1, 2. By 4, that will be 2, 1. Divide by 3, we have uh, 4 remaining and 7. So your answer will be 4 over 7. That will be question number two. Moving on to uh, question number three. Write the following numbers in order of size starting with the smallest. So, so this is decimal, this is fraction, fraction and percentage. So the first thing we can do is to convert everything into decimal place and then we can compare uh, properly. So this one here is uh, 0 0.67. So this we know it is 0 0.6666, this will be 0 0.66. How about this one? So 7 over 9, we know that it is bigger than 7 over 10, which is 0 0.7. So by this assumption, we can see that if this is bigger than 0 0.7, it must be bigger than everything else. So this will be here. And now, what's the smallest one? It will be this one, 66%. And then we have this one, 2 over 3, and last one, 0 0.67. Now, for part B, during one month, the volume of perfume in a bottle decreased from 5 ml to 4 ml. What is the percentage decrease? So the decrease is 5 minus 4 divided over initial amount times 100 for percentage. That will be 1 over 5 times 100, that will be 20. 20% 20 will be your answer for part B. Now question number 4, add 55 minutes to 2.4 hours, giving your answer in hours and minutes. So what is uh, 0.4 hours? So we have to do times 60 and find out. So 0, uh, 4 times uh, be 24. Yep, that's it. So we have one decimal place, it becomes 24 minutes. So 0 0.4 is 24 minutes. So if you want to add 2 hours and 24 minutes to 55 minutes, that will be what? 9, 7, 6 goes here. 3. So it becomes 3 hours and 19 minutes. So this is 7. 7 is. Um, so we have to take out 6 because 60 minutes is 1 hour. That's why it goes here. 
and then becomes 3 hours and 19 minutes. Now for part B, uh, the mass of a bag of sugar is given as 1.5 kg, correct to the nearest tenth of a kg, tenth is 0 0.1 kg. Now write down the upper bound of this mass, giving you answer in grams. So let's first find the answer in kilograms, and then we can write this in grams. So um, the first step is to write down the measurement, plus minus this one, divided by 2. So the upper bound will be 1.55, lower bound will be 1.45. So write down the upper bound, this will be kg, to times 1000, to make it grams, so that will be 1.5, so the answer will be 1.550. Question number five, here we have f of x is equal to uh, this function, find the inverse. So first step, let y equal to f of x, which is 2x plus 3 over 5x. Now we have to make x the subject of formula. So that will be 2 plus 3. So we set x over here. We have this minus 2x equal to 3, uh, this, this 3. And then x outside will become 5y minus 2 equal to 3. So x becomes 3 divided by 5y minus 2. But now f of inverse of x, it needs to be in terms of x. So 3 will change y to x. This will be your answer for question number 5. Now question number 6. By making suitable approximations, estimate the value of this. So if you have suitable approximations, you first look at the value inside the uh, square root. So here we have square root of 15.96. So what is the closest square number you know to 15.96? Um, we know 16, right? So we convert 15.96 to 1, 6. So it means that we are writing this correct to 2SF. So we have to write everything else correct to 2SF. So this one will be 2SF. So this one is less than 5, so it becomes 300. And the last one, 0 0.975, this 2. And this one is bigger than 5, so 0 0.20. Okay, so now let's replace these values back into uh, the fraction. So the first one will be 300 times square root of 16 divided by 0 0.2. You simplify, you will get um, 300 times 4 divided by 0 0.2. Divided by 2, we have 0 0.1, 2, that will be 600 over 0 0.1. So if you move one decimal place, you have to add one zero, it becomes 6,000 for the estimate of question number 6. Question number 7, find the values of x and y where it is. So we have to expand. So here we have uh, on the first line. So let's keep, uh, let's bring this in. We have 2x over 14 equal to minus 6. 3y minus 4 minus 2. Simplify this, we'll have minus 10 and 3y plus 2. Right, so equate. So first line we have 2y equal to minus 10, which means x equal to, sorry, x equal to minus 10 divided by 2 will be minus 5. On this line we have 14 equal to 3y plus 2, so 3y equal to 12, so y equal to 4. The answer will be minus 5 and 4. So question number 8, a large tank contain this much, this much liter of oil. That's the large tank. During a 4 week period, this much was used. Calculate the remaining of, uh, of oil in the tank after 4 weeks. So we have to take this minus this to find the amount remaining in the tank. So the first thing we see is that uh, the powers are different. 
So we can send one zero here. We have 23 times 10 power 5 minus 1.2 times 10 power 5. So now the powers are the same. We can do this minus this. So what is 23 minus 1.2? That will be 8, 1. That will be 21.8 times 10 power 5. So your answer needs to be in standard form. It will be 2.18 times 10 power 6. Now part B, giving your answer in standard form, calculate the average number of liters used each week. So average, um, you have to take total divided by number of weeks. So total use was 1.2 times 10 power 5 and number of weeks is 4 weeks. So we can send one zero here, we have 12 times 10 power uh, 4 divided by 4, 1, 3, that becomes 3 times 10 power 4. So this will be your answer for part B. Moving on to question number 9, it is given that we have this inequality has solution this, find the value of A and B. So uh, let's write this down again. So we have 13 less than less than 18. Okay. So the first thing we can do to get rid of um, this one, we can minus 7 everywhere. So this becomes 17, uh, 13 minus 7. That will become two, um, 6. This will become minus 2 less than 11. Now, divide by 2 everywhere, we will have 3 minus x, that becomes 11 over 2. Now, to get rid of this, we have to divide by minus 1. So this switches, it becomes on this side, and this becomes on this side. So your value of A will be minus 11 over 2, which is um, minus 5, 1 half. If you want to write this this way, it's okay. But if you want to keep this way, it's fine as well. And B will be minus 3. So now part B, factorize this completely. So how would you do this? Um, so let's try... Uh, let's try this. So you can see here we have Let's take this on one side So what is X is common? So we have 2y minus 3 So keep plus here. Here we have uh, 5 is common. That will be minus 2y plus 3 So let's rearrange This one we can take the minus sign out and become minus 5 2y minus 3 so this and this are the same, so we take it out, and remaining will be x minus 5. So this will be your answer for question number 10. Okay. Question number 11. So here we have a few uh, shapes available. Uh, which of these quadrilateral have exactly two lines of symmetry? So which has exactly two lines? I know that a rectangle has exactly two lines of symmetry. Uh, which has exactly, uh, which has rotational symmetry of order two? Um, I know this one has. So order two, uh, this one has, and this one also has order two as well. So we have two, which has order two. Uh, diagonals are equal, that will be a rhombus. So that will be your answer. So you just have to know the shapes. Rhombus is this shape, and a square is this shape, rectangle is this shape, and the last one will be this shape. 
So you just have to know which one has exactly two line of symmetry. So this and this, right? And rotational symmetry, you can have one or two for this one or this one as well. But this two has, I think, four. But this two has two. And then diagonals are equal. So this and this, yep, are equal. So you can choose for your answers. Now for question number 12, uh, the diagram shows a thermometer with a circular dial that records temperatures in degrees Celsius. As you can see here, write down the temperature indicated by the pointer. So here we have minus 10, minus 20, so that will be 1, 2, 3, so that will be minus 13. Okay, so that, that is part A. Moving on to part B, the temperatures increases from minus 20 to 40. The pointer turns through an angle of 300 degrees. Calculate the angle through which the pointer turns when there's seven degrees rise in temperature. So what is the rise here? What is the change in temperature here? Change is 40 minus minus 20, so 60 degrees change. This change equal to 300 degrees on the angle. So how much will be seven? Seven degrees will be 300 divided by 60 times seven. That will be uh, 35 degrees. So your answer will be 35 degree change uh, for a seven degree Celsius rise. Now for part C, on a day, the temperature at 1 a.m. it was 4 degrees Celsius. By 6 a.m. it had fallen by 9 degrees Celsius. So what is the temperature? So 4 minus 9, you have fallen, you become minus 5. That will be your answer for part C. Moving on to question number 13. A map has a scale of 2 to 5 km. Express the scale in the form of 1 to n. So first thing, as you can see, cm is different from km. So let's change this to become the same. So 5 km is equal to 5,000 m, which is equal to 5,000, two zeros, cm. So let's compare. So 2 cm comparing to 500,000 cm so that becomes 2 1 2 3 this will be your answer for part A now for part B the actual distance between two places is 35 km calculate the distance uh, on the map between those two places so we know the scale is 2 cm to 5 km. So 5 km represents 2 centimeters. So how much does 35 km represent? It becomes 2 divided by 5 times 35. That will be 1, 7, 14. So on the map it will be 14 centimeters. Now on the map the lake of a, uh, the area of the lake is this much on the map. Calculate the actual area of the lake. So, um, as you can see from the scale, we have two centimeter is five km. So this is for um, distance, distance and which is in centimeter, which is a unit of distance. Now for area, the unit is centimeter square. How do you convert this to centimeter square? You have to square this to get this same thing here we have to square this part becomes four centimeter square becomes 25 kilometer square this is the ratio of the areas so here we have four centimeter square represents 25 kilometer square so what does eight centimeter square represent becomes 25 divided by four times eight two 50. So your answer here will be 50 km. So
So this is question number 14. The table shows the results when a six-sided die was thrown 50 times. So frequency is 50. Write down the model score. So we have the frequency is maximum. It's here. So model will be 5. Find the mean score. So mean we have to do this. So multiply this. That will be 7. And that will be 14, 18, 36, 55, and 60. So we have to add everything up to have the sum and divide by 50. So let's add everything up. So this will become uh, 7 plus 14, that will be 21. 21 plus 18, that will become 39. 39 plus 36, that will be 75. 75 plus 55, that will be a 0 on the end. 130. 130 plus 60, that will be 190. So sum is equal to 190. So mean will be 190 divided by frequency, which is 50. 19 over 5. So you can write your answer like that, or you can write it um, like that. So 3, 4, over 5, if you want to. Or you can write 3.8 if you want to. That will be the same as this one. Now question number 15. So we have the universal set is uh, integer more than 5. So 6, 7, 8, 9 going on. Now P is a prime factor, F is a multiple of 4, and uh, X here is S is a multiple of 6. Now the Venn diagram shows the universal set and the set F. Uh, part A, draw and label the two set P and S to complete the Venn diagram. Okay, so F is a prime numbers. And these are multiple self, so you will not you will not touch um, so P will not touch anyone because it is prime numbers. And these ones are multiple of f is a multiple of four, and this one will be multiple of six. So they will have some common factors for sure. Here you go. This will be the set P, and this will be S. Now for point B, write down possible element y such that y is an even number, and uh, write down one possible value of y is an even number, and y is in the set of f union s so f union s outside it needs to be outside of f union s so what even number can be um, outside of this so very easy um, so here as we, as we can see it must be so i can see one already it's 14 so 14 will be the value because 14 is even number, it is more than 5, so it is in the set, more than 5. And also 14, it is not a multiple of 4, not a multiple of 6, so it qualifies. This one is only done by trial and error, so there's no right answer. It can be so many uh, answers, so if it can be 14, you can try many answers, you will find something. So this will be uh, 14 for me, and then that will be question number 15. So now the diagram shows a solid prism of length 20. The length here is 20. And now we have uh, the cross section A, B, C, D is a trapezium. Okay. Now it says calculate the area of the trapezium. So we use our formula, which is half times sum of two sides, 2 plus 6 times a length in between. That will be 3, so half times 8 times 3. That will be 4 times 3, which is 12. 12 centimeter square. Now part B, calculate the total surface area of this prism. So we have to find the surface area of this prism. So one by one. So for the uh, trapezium, there's one here and one in the back. That will be 2 times 12. Plus and we have this side which is a rectangle the length is 20 and the width is 50 so 20 times 
sorry, 5. The length and the width is 5. So, and then we have this top, which is 22 plus 20 times 2. And we have the back, uh, which is also a rectangle. That will be 3 times 20. And the last slide will be the, uh, the bottom, which is also a rectangle, will be 6 times 20. So let's simplify 24 plus 100 plus 40 plus 60 plus 120. So what do you get? This one will be 200 plus 120, that will be 320. So 24 plus 320 will be 344. So your answer will be 344 centimeter square. So now question number 17. In the diagram, B is a point A2. So B is a point that's 8 and that's 2. Right. And we have the equation of the line AB is y equal to 2. It's a straight line. The equation of the line AC is 2y minus 2x minus y equal to 3. So that's the line AC and this last, that's the line AB. Now, we have BC produced passes to the origin. So BC produced passes to the point O. Okay? Now we say AC produced intersect the Y axis at D. So AC, it cuts the line Y axis at point D. Find the coordinates at, at D. So we know the equation of the line AC. AC will be 2, this. So at, at y axis, x equal to 0. So we place that in the equation. We have minus y equal to 3. 3 equal to this. Sorry, y equal to minus 3. So your answer will be the points D will be 0 minus 3. Now for point B, the region inside the triangle ABC is defined by three inequalities. One of these is this. Find the other two. So where's the triangle ABC? Triangle ABC will be this, this, and this. We know the equation of the line AC, which is 2x minus y equal to 3, and the line AB, which is y equal to 2. So now we have to find the equation of the line BC. So how do we find the line equation of the line BC? So as you can see, the line passes to the point B, which is this much, and passes to the point O. So let's find the equation of the line BC. So it passes to the point B, which is 8, 2, and also goes to the point O, which is... So what is the gradient? 2 over 8, and the equation will be... Uh, y, x, 1 over 4. That will be 4y equal to x. So this will be the equation of the line AC. 4y equal to x. Okay, so we have the first one, which is less than 2. So below this line. And we have to have this one, which is more than this, which is 4y is bigger than x. So second one will be And last one is this one. It should be on this side. It will be 2x minus y bigger than 3. And that will be part B of question 17. Moving on to question 18. So part A, we have this. So we have to simplify this. So 3, take 2 inside, A, 4 times 2. That will be 9A. 8. Now for B, this is negative, so we have to convert this to positive 2. So we have to flip the inside upside down. That will become this, which is which is 16 over 1. So 16 will be your answer. Now for this one, we have x3 is 27. Oh, 
what is the value of x so pretty easy so what is 27 uh, power of 0 becomes 1 so x power 3 is 1 so what is x so you know that x will be cube root of 1 which is 1 this will be your answer for part c now for part d evaluate this so how would you do this so as you can see we can take uh, so top we have half right and here we also have three three half so we can do 12 divide by this and we take out half outside for now now let's simplify so divide by 3 what do we have 2 remaining 4 becomes 4 over 9 half which is 2 over 3 your answer will be 2 over 3 and that's it for question number 18 Now, question number 19 a regular polygon has interior angle of 160 find the number of sides of this polygon so we say let number of sides equal to n so how do you find 160 you have to take n minus 2 times 180 divided by n equal to 160 so cross multiply we have n minus 2 equal to 160n so this can go away and then if you divide by uh, by 3 we have 6 sorry by uh, by 2 we have 9 and we have 8 so we have n minus 2 9 equal to 8n so let's simplify on this side we have 9n minus 18 equal to 8n so bring this over here we have 9n minus 8n equal to 18 so n equal to 18 so number of sides will be 18 for part a now part b the diagram shows three sides we have a b b c and c d so these three are the same of this polygon calculate the angle b a c so b a c so as you can see this is a triangle a b c and this is 160 so this will be how much we know that the sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180 so the remaining will be 20 divided by 2 that will be 10. now part 2 calculate the angle a c d a c so a c d so find this angle so we know this one big one is 160 and the small one is 10 so this one will be 150 so that's pretty easy so 150 for angle ACD this is question uh, number 20 a series of shapes made of match sticks are is shown below you have this shape here now uh, draw shape number four so let's see how can we draw this shape so every time it's going up by one so it goes up by one so he has uh, one two three one two three four one two three four five so one two three four five six one two three four five six that's the base and the top is one two three one two three four so one two three four five then we join this okay just make sure you're using a ruler to draw this properly but this should be the shape of of this number four <laughs> so there will be the table shows the numbers of matchsticks used to make shape 1 and shape 2. So 12, 18, let's count for this one. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 
20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it make 24. So this plus 6, plus 6, plus 6, that will be 34, diagram 4. Now, final expression in terms of n for the number of mastics uh, used to make shape n. So, as you can see, every single time there's 6, 6, 6. So we write 6, n. Now, what do we know? We know that the first term is equal to 12. First term is n equal to 1. So if you put 6 times n, that is 6, so which is not the same. How do you change 6 to 12? You have to add 6. So same thing here. You add 6, there will be your tn. So it'll be 6n plus 6. Uh, explain why there is not a shape with 100 match sticks. So as you can see, um, if you so if you have to solve this equation tn, so which is 6n plus 6, solving this, we can never find an exact value for n because if you do this, that will be uh, 94, and uh, let's try this here. So n will be 94 divided by 6 which will be 1, um, 2, 1, 3, 8, point. As you can see, it's not an exact value. Because of that, it cannot be 100 match 6. So you can show this working here. Or if you want to, you can say um, that 94 is not a multiple of 6 or you can say 100 is not a multiple of 6 as well you can say that as well or you can say uh, otherwise you can say 6 is not a factor of 100 so you have three possible answers I would choose to use this one or this one for my answer. Or you can show the work here to prove that this is the answer as well. So now for part 21. Uh, the time taken to fill a tank with water varies inversely as the area of cross-section of the inlet. So the time taken, let's call this y, and area of cross-section, let's call this x. So it says y varies inversely with the area of this. So that is our first equation, y equal to k over x. Now, the time taken is 40 minutes, y equal to 40, 1x equal to 3. So k will be 3 times 40, that will be 120. So Okay, so this is the equation that we have. Now find the number of minutes it takes to fill when the area is area is 5, find y. So y will be 120 divided by 5, that will be 60. So 60 minutes will be your answer for part A. Now it is given that area is a square centimeters. Find the expression in terms of a for the, uh, for the number of minutes it takes to fill the tank. So we have y equal to 120 over x so now when x equal to a y will be 120 over a that is your answer for part b uh, now for part c uh, water flowed into uh, the empty tank through a pipe of area 4 centimeters square that's the area now uh, it flows for 9 minutes Find its simpler form, the fraction of the tank that now contain uh, So this one we have to look at one case by one. So let's first look at this one. It says the water flowed into the empty tank through a pipe of area. So what is our equation? It is y equal to 120 divided by a. Now if area is, is 4, it means that y will be 120 divided by 4, that will be 30 minutes. So it means that with this pipe, 
it will take 30 minutes to fill out the whole tank. So that is the time taken to fill out the whole tank. Now, it says they only flow for 9 minutes. It means that the fraction is now contained water is 9 minutes over 30. Because 30 represents the time it would take to fill out the whole tank. And 9 minutes, it was the time it was only allowed to flow in the tank. So this is the fraction. Divide by 3. That will be 10. So the fraction will be 3 over 10. That will be your answer for part C. Now question number 22. Here we have find the determinant of A. So we have to use a formula. Cross x. So we have to do cross section. Cross multiply uh, minus simplify 5 minus minus 2 becomes 7. Now write down this. So what is the adjacent matrix of A? It will be 1, 5, minus 2, 1. So inverse is equal to 1 over 7 times this. That is uh, part B. Now for part X, find the matrix X such that A is 5 minus 1, 2, 1 times x equal to 11 minus 5. So in what shape, uh, what form must be matrix x? So we have this one. So we say that it must be in row, uh, row by column, should be in this form. So we can have something like this as our answer. So let's do that. So 5a plus 2b will be 11 minus a plus b will be minus 5 so let's solve uh, let's make a um, a the subject of formula becomes b plus 5 replacing the first one 5 times a plus 2b will be equal to 11 so 5b plus 25 plus 2b equal to 11 so this 2, that will be 7b equal to 11 minus 25. That will be minus 14. So b will be minus 2. So a will be minus 2 plus mm, 5. That will be 3. So x will be the matrix a minus 2. That will be your question number 22. Now going on to uh, question number 23. So Ali and Ben each made a journey between points to towns P and Q. So towns P and Q, they are 60 meters apart. So this distance is 60 meters apart. Now, these two journeys are shown on the travel graph. So this one is Ben. Ben come from here to here and Ali here to here. Now, part A, calculate Ali's speed. Ali's speed, so when we have a distance time graph, the speed is equal to the gradient of the triangle. So what is the height? The height is 60. And what is the base? The base will be in hours, so 1 hour, 2, 3, 4 hours. So that will be 15 kilometers per hour for the speed of Ali. Now part B, find the number of minutes after 3 p.m. that Ali and Ben passed each other. So after they meet at this point. So let's find the value on the graph here. This one will be here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so 6. So 0 0.6 times 60 for minutes, that will be 36 minutes. So they, mem they met each, each other, they passed each other after 36 minutes past 3 p.m. Now for part C, find how far Ben had traveled when Ali, when he met Ali. So let's find how far Ben has traveled. So we have to find the area of graph for Ben. So it will be area of, of triangle. But since Ben traveled in the opposite direction, I mean in from top to bottom, we have to find this area. So this is what? This is 230. 
and this is um, 3.36, right. That's the time that we have for this two. And what is the height? Sorry, that's the base, and height will be? Uh, this is what? This will be two squares, so this is 30, this is 24. So distance travel will be here is what? Um, that will be 60 minus 24. What is this distance? So let's do that. 60 minus 24. That will be um, 5, 10, 6, 36 km. So again here, um, we don't need to find the area in the graph. The reason is because this is not a speed time graph. It is a, it is a distance time graph. So we just need to read off directly of this distance to see how much he traveled before he met Ben. So this is 24, this is 60. So this distance here will be 60 minus 24 to find the, to find the distance traveled because this is a distance time graph and not a speed time graph. Now for part D. Chris left P at 3 p.m. and traveled to Q at a speed of 30 km per hour. So at 3 p.m. we have a new person named Chris. He left uh, P at 3 p.m. That's the time he left P. Now he traveled to Q at 30 km per hour. So we know that the distance from P to Q so P to Q is 60 km. If his speed is 30 km per hour, he will take two hours to reach. So that will be three, four, five. At 5 p.m., he would reach the region. So it means that this will be the graph for Chris. So that will be Chris graph. And that is the last part of this question. So question 23. Moving on to uh, question number 24. In the diagram, we have A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. So A, B, C, D, as you can see. Now we have P is a midpoint of B, C, which means this is uh, B, C is Q. This will be half Q and half Q. And we have DQ and QP is 1 to 2. So DQ and QP is in the ratio of 1 to 2. Now, we have AB is P and AD is Q. So AB is P and AD is Q. Now part 1, uh, express DP in terms of P and Q. So where is DP? DP in terms of, so DP we have to put D go to A, A go to B, B go to Q, right? So DP will be D go to A plus A go to B plus B go to P. So DA will be Q, AB will be uh, P, and BP will be half Q. So the answer will be P plus 3 over 2 Q. That will be the answer for part uh, A. Now part B. Express DQ in terms of P and Q. So where's DQ? DQ is this distance. So as you can see here, we know the length of DP already. And DQ is the ratio here, 1. So DQ is, is 1 over 3 times uh, DP. That will be 1 over 3 times P, 3 over 2 Q. So let's do that. That will be 1 over 3 P plus 1 over 2 Q. This will be your answer for part 2. Now for question part C, express this in terms of P and Q, giving your answer in the simplest form. So AQ, AQ, we have to do A, D, DQ. So AD is Q plus DQ is one third P plus half Q. That will be one third P plus three over two Q. So this will be your answer for AQ. 
Now for part D, R is a point on BC produced such that BR is KBP. So BR is KBP. Okay, it's a multiple of BP, basically. Now part one, express AR in terms of P and Q and Q. So what is AR? A going to R it will be A going to B, B going to R. So A going to B plus B going to R. So AB is P, BR is K, B, P. So that will be P plus K, BP is half Q, which is P plus half K, Q. This will be your answer over here. Now, part two, given that AQR is a straight line, find the value of K. Given that AQR is a straight line, find the value of K. So we're gonna use the same thing as here. We would say that um, AR is a multiple, let's use a constant, C of AQ. So let's use that to find the value. So what is AR? It is P. Let's use vector form. P is one and half K equal to C times AQ. What is AQ? AQ is one over three uh, P. P, we don't put P, sorry, and 3 over 2. So now let's compare. The value of C is what? C will be uh, 1, so 1 equal to 1 over 3C. So C will be 3. So here we have half K equal to 3 times 3 over 2. If you cross multiply, you will have so if you take out those two, k will be equal to 9. So the value of k is 9. So just, just to equate those fractions as a simultaneous equation, so the first equation is 1 equal to 1 over 3c. And second one is half k equal to 3 over 2c. So equate those simultaneously to find the value of c and k. You find k equal to 9. So how do I get this fraction here? I mean this equation. So it's the same trick as here. As you can see, they took BR, it's a multiple of BP. So BR is this. BR is a multiple of BP. So same thing for me here. We have the line AR. So we say AR is a multiple of AQ. So same trick. I found this equation and then we replace to get the value of K. That was question number 24. Now moving on to question number 25. The diagram below shows a quadrilateral ABCD. That's the shape. Now we have to measure the angle ABC. We have to use our ABC, this angle here. So let's go to point uh, B. So let's go to the center here. So this line will be on the angle, this is 130, 135, now will be 137. So I have 137 for my answer. Uh, you may have 136 or 138, and that is okay as well. So on the diagram, construct the locus of points inside of the shape ABCD that are condition number one, four centimeters from AD. So AD is the line, it needs to be four centimeters from AD. So you have to draw a line parallel to AD, which is four centimeters from AD. So how would you do that? We can use a compass or you can just use a ruler directly. Uh, let's measure four centimeters first from the from our ruler. So this will be um, four is here. Okay, that is good. Go to point D, intersect. And go to point A. So do that as well for both sides. Okay, now go to this point. 
do an arc and cut the first and go to this point and then cut the other arc so you'll see you have two points are the intersection you just have to join them and this line will be four centimeters from the line a inside of the shape ABCD. So this will be your answer for part one. Now for part two, it needs to be equidistant from A and D. A and D points A and D. It means that we need to find the bisector of the line AD. So let's show this. So let's go to point D. Measure distance which is more than halfway. So about here. And then draw an arc on this side. Arc on this side. Both sides and then go to point A with the same distance and then cut the first arc on top and below so you will have two points, one here and one here just join them together but inside of the shape okay, that's it that will be the shape A, B, C, D and this will be the required locus now on part C, on the diagram, shade the region inside ABCD containing the points that are more than 4 cm from AD. So more than 4 will be on top. And then must be nearer to D than to A. Must be close to D than to A. So it should be this region. So make sure you show this properly, but it needs to be in this region. Now for point D, the point P is 4 cm from AD and as near as possible to the point C. Mark and label the position of P on the diagram. So the point P is 4 cm from AD, so it is 4 from AD. It needs to be on this line and it is as near as possible from the point, from the point C. So it needs to be the perpendicular distance from this line. It will be on this line, but it needs to be close as possible to the point C. So it will be the, the perpendicular distance from the point C. So it will be this point. This is the point P. And you can just show that it is the perpendicular distance from the point C to point P. So whenever you have to find as near as possible, closest distance, it is always the perpendicular distance from two points. Uh, mark and label the point P on the diagram. So it needs to be here. That's the point P. That will be your question number 25. Question number 26. So in the diagram, we have AB touches the circle at, uh, at T. So A, B, a T. Okay. So we have um, O, B intersect the circle at C. Okay. So this will be right angle because it is a tangent. Now, state with reason the value of angle B, T, O. B, T, O. B, T, O is 90 because A, B is tangent to circle meeting at point C, uh, point T. Yeah, there you go. That's your answer. Now, question is, given that AT is 40, so AT is 40, so TB is, for, TB is 40, CB is 10, this is 10, uh, the radius of the circle is x, so we don't know this, this is x. Form an equation in terms of x, hence find the radius of the circle. So let's give a try to uh, do this question. So we know the radius is x, so this is x, this is also x this whole length OB, OB will be x plus 10. So as you can see, here we have OTB, it's a right angle triangle. 
So we can form an equation which is the Pythagoras theorem, which says that uh, this square plus this square equal to this square. So let's write this down. We have x square plus 40 square equal to x plus 10 square. Now let's expand. We have x square plus 40 times 40, that will be this much, and this will be x square plus 20x plus 100. So this goes away. So 20x equal to uh, 16 minus this. So 20x will be 15. And value of x will be 15, 0, 0, divided by 20. 175 so we have the value of x which is 75 which is the radius and that is our answer so again one more time uh, the way we derive this is as you can see this is a right angle triangle and we have to use the Pythagoras theorem so we know this is x this is 40 so this to here will also be x because it is the radius and this to here is x plus 10 so now we know we have to use x square plus 40 square equal to this square and then we solve we found x equal to 75 so this was the last question of this paper if you guys have uh, any questions or comments or requests leave a comment down below and I was just to advise you know the most important thing about those people right now is to understand how we did those questions step by step and if you guys have any uh, questions about any topic leave a comment i will try to cover them and do uh, topical questions later on well on that note thank you for watching i'll see you soon